Hello, how are you? I'm trying to put my camera down correctly. Well, I hope you're doing well today. People, I, I did a video, um, a German video, but about the temple. I better be truthful. I don't think I need to do it again. I just did one not long ago. You know, I mean, I think, you know, even was it last week? It was where was the temple located and is a third temple um, necessary? So I did a lot of studies there again, as I have done previously. And yet it seems like a lot of people are again bringing up that topic. And especially these fake, I call them today, fake Christians. Christians that are going after, and that's just the first group, going after dispensationalism. That is definitely a group of so-called Christians that are really not true Christians. And I know there are probably a lot of these cha Christians, so-called Christians, that are just going along with these false teachers. And they just don't know how misled they are, which is extremely unfortunate. Because everybody who says, I'm following Jesus, should be studying in the Bible everything that anybody says. Any teacher, question your teachers, people. Question your teachers. Go to the Bible and read it yourself. I know a lot of people say, oh, well, I'm not that good and blah, blah, blah. No, no. If you are truly connected to God, I mean, to Jesus. If you truly following Jesus, you can ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in this matter. And he will guide you if you keep your eyes and your uh, uh, you know, mind open. Okay? Okay, it, there's nothing wrong listening to some people, but you need to read things for yourself. Okay? For yourself. Because there's so many false teachers out there. And again, I'm going to talk about today only the ones that follow dispensationalism. And unfortunately, people, that is probably 90% or more of the leaders of the traditional churches, whether it's uh, evangelical churches, whether Protestant churches, um, whether they are non-denominational churches, I'll guarantee you that more than 90%, at least 95% are following dispensationalism. How do you know they're following dispensationalism? Well, one of the thing is the temple. If your leaders believe that a temple will be rebuilt or a temple has to be rebuilt, for Messiah to come, then they're wrong. That part of dispensationalism is called Zionism. It's the belief that Israel has some more time, more time for what, I don't know, but has another seven years. Okay, to what? I don't know, people. I don't know to what, um, to find Messiah, because right now they have time to find Messiah. You don't have to wait seven years uh, or that seven year period of time where they are going to what, miraculously finally wake up and accept Messiah as uh, for who he is. Now, why would they not do that now? Why would they do that during the seven years? Well, people say, oh, God has blinded them. But God has only blinded them in part. And you can look at that up, okay? Look exactly, put that in the computer, that God has blinded them in part because they have rejected him. 
Okay? So, in part, that does not mean they are blinded forever. Because if that would be the case, all these Jews that are now accepting Messiah, I don't know what, what is happening to them. They are not blinded. They see Jesus. They see the Messiah. Okay? So, maybe the interpretation or the assumptions we have in is wrong. In other words, the Jews will never be able to accept Messiah during this whole 2,000 years, the time of the Gentiles? No, that's not true. Except that the true, I mean, the, the message, general message, will come through the Gentiles. That's what that period of time means. They have the major work of bringing this message into this world. Does not mean that the Jews are not being reached right now. Because they are being reached. So this whole idea that the Jews have to go back. Well, what are they going back to? Well, it's their, it's their what? Old covenant? They can't go back to the old covenant because the old covenant is gone. So what are they going back to? Oh, they are the, the people of God, right? They're the people of God. They are the Israel. They're Israel. Well, think again. That's not what Paul is teaching. Are you truly a follower, follower of Jesus? If you are, then you accept that Paul had the Holy Spirit and was telling us a lot of things, okay, pertaining the Jews and the Gentiles. That both of them together will make up the Israel of God. But only the believers. So only believing Jews. That means right now is their chance to accept Messiah. Not after the rapture. Now, you know I believe in the rapture. Now, the rapture I know is not in the Bible. It's called being caught up. It's the resurrection, 1 Thessalonians 4, the resurrection of the believers. And people, there is no only one group that there are believers. Those are the believers in Jesus. The believers that have accepted Messiah either as coming, those are the Old Testament believers, or the people that accept Messiah as having come. And then you have to follow God. Follow His will. You can't follow your own ways. You have to follow the will of God. We see this over and over again. I read that in the scripture over and over. That we have to follow the commandments of God. That we have to, now, commandments of God. Okay? That is not identical with the commandments that God gave to Moses. The commandments or the law, the law of Moses, contains a lot of things pertaining, or a lot, 75%, I believe, 80%, pertaining the Old Covenant. And the Old Covenant has to do with the sacrifices who are only a shadow of things to come, who are only symbolic for what is to come. And once the one comes that is supposed to come, which is Messiah, and is the ultimate sacrifice, these old things will pass away. They will no longer be needed. So the stuff that the Jews are doing today is not needed. And it's going against God's instructions. God told them in Jeremiah 31, 31, that he will establish a new covenant with them. And Daniel picked up on that. And his writings bring that in. Daniel um, chapter 9. When he talked about the 70 weeks. 
that the 70 weeks still have to be fulfilled. He got that idea also from Jeremiah, but he also got it directly from um, the archangel Michael. No, not Michael. Gabriel. Sorry, it was Gabriel. Told him that the Jews, or yeah, the Jews, and I hope you understand who the Jews are. They are from the kingdom of Judah. The kingdom of Judah only had the Jews, which, is, which are from the tribes of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. And the, the, they belonged to the kingdom of Judah and they were called Jews. And they were the only ones left. And God told them that they had 70 weeks left. Not all of Israel, because the 10 tribes of Israel were already gone and they will never come back, regardless of what the, what the Jews are telling us. We see that once in a while. I see that once in a while. Oh, the, uh, the 12 tribes are coming back. No, the 12 tribes are not coming back. And they don't need to come back. They don't need to come back. They are mixed under the Gentiles. And the only way they can come back to God right now is by accepting Jesus as Messiah. And if they're coming back as under the Jewish religion, the old covenant, they are lost anyways. It doesn't do any good. They are not God's people anyways. I already said that in Ephesians. I believe it's Ephesians 2. Okay. That now God's people... God's people are built from believers. The true Israel of God are God's believers. The believers of Messiah. The ones that follow the new covenant that Jeremiah and Daniel was talking about. If we don't follow that, everything else is idol worship. When we go back to these old rituals, Jewish or, or Hebrew rituals under the law of Moses. We will have to fulfill the whole law and they cannot fulfill the whole law, right? Because they can't. So they are really basically lost and they have to acknowledge, wait a minute, these sacrifices never saved, saved us in this first place. Who is going to save us? It's the Messiah that God has promised. And what do the Jews do? They look for a worldly leader, just like they did during the time of Jesus. They looked for a worldly leader. They didn't look for a savior. They still don't look for a savior because they think they can do it themselves. They believe that their works can definitely save them and they will make it in the books of life. They just do the right things. That's not what God says. Never did he say that. And the, the, the Jews, the believers, the Hebrews that recognized that, they were following Jesus. And they accepted this new covenant and they accepted the plan that God had for them. And every Jew or every Hebrew today is saved exactly through that. Now, if the Jews are not accepting Messiah before the rapture happens, before this event happens in 1 Thessalonians 4, when Jesus resurrects his uh, um his saints, his people, um, the the chosen one. What else do I? How else do I need to describe them? Well, uh, that group is described in Revelation fourteen. Okay, Revelation fourteen. That group is described. That scribe is, that group is also described in Revelation seven. The multitude. Okay, those are the believers. Those are the people of God. And if they have not accepted Messiah, by the time that event happens, okay, we, the bride of Christ, the church believes that at that time, Jesus will come 
and take out the bride before the wrath of God happens. The bride of Christ knows that. And everybody who did not accept Jesus before that event is not bride anymore. They will not be part of the temple. They will not be part of the Israel of God. I have done a video about that one not too long ago. Okay? Now, you're going to have to go back. If you're new, go back and look at my videos. It was that, do we know the day or the hour of the rapture? I don't remember exactly. All Israel will be saved. That's probably the one. Okay? Look at that again. All Israel will be saved. And I think that is a good one that I did that um, study about. Okay? So look at that again. But all Israel are all believers. And why did he say all Israel? Because all Israel includes the, uh, the uh, he, not just the Jews, but also the Gentiles. Now, I know the Jews and those people that are following the rabbis, the Jewish rabbis, they always think, and that's why I mentioned that with the tribes coming back, they think that event is the tribes coming back and they're becoming one again. Okay? These two chords coming together. That's what they think. But that's not it. What in the Old Testament, I don't remember who it was, and Paul described the same thing as the two coming together and making one out of the two is not Israel or, yeah, the, the, the kingdom of Israel coming back and joining Judah again and becoming one again. It is actually Hebrews or Jews, because that's the only thing we have left right now, and Gentiles coming together. Because that is the whole Israel of God. That is the Israel of God. Not just the Hebrews. And the Hebrews, they miss that. And unfortunately, that's probably why they went astray. Because they didn't understand. They didn't follow God. They didn't listen to God. Yes, I understand they didn't have the Holy Spirit in the, uh, during the Old Testament. But still, some still followed God. The uh, uh, apostles and the people following Jesus, they didn't have the Holy Spirit at first. And they still followed him. They still listened to him and they followed him. So it is possible. But do you know, the Hebrews are just as fallen creatures as the Gentiles. They are not any better. You know, they, they Jews always think they're better and that's why God picked them. But that's not true. They are not any better. We are all sinners, all of us. And Paul made that very, very clear. And because we are all sinners, we cannot save ourselves. That's why we need a, a, a sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice, which only God can provide. He is the perfect sacrifice. Nobody, not one human being is a perfect sacrifice. We all have flaws. They should realize that because it has to be a flawless sacrifice, whether it's the lame, whether it's the heifer, whether it's anything it has to be flawless. And they should know. And that Pure sacrifice can only be God because he is without sin. Therefore, God himself became human being, human being in Jesus Christ, died for us and take, took away the sins of the world. Read um, John 1, okay, John 1. Or John 1, 2, and 3. So that is a simple one. That is what John wrote. John 1, 2, and 3. So people, 
We need to understand that. We need to understand that the Jews and the Gentiles together now make up the body of Christ, make up the church, make up the temple of God, make up the true Israel of God. And therefore, right now, this whole nonsense about rebuilding a or building a temple is uh, abomination. Okay? It's an abomination to God. It is putting up their own rituals. They're not rituals that God wanted them to do. Nowhere did God uh, appear to them today and say, build me a temple. No place. They are assuming that themselves. It's an assumption. They have not had a prophet for how many years? How many years? Oh, yeah, they had people that uh, helped them write the, uh, um, the interpretation of Torah. Yeah, they did. But those were all occult leaders. Occult leaders that led them astray. They did not have a prophet that told them what God wanted them to do. No, they should know God has not even talked to them in the past, how many years? 2,000 years. Because the last prophet that came, they rejected. That is why. And that was Jesus Christ. Oh no, we can't accept him. Why? Because we want our own sacrificial system. We want to, you know, have our own system. We want to be in control of our own system. We're not interested in following God. That is their belief. And that's why this attempt, this attempt and attempt and attempt to build a third temple is wrong. And people that are following that, those kinds of people are wrong. I know I started talking about dispensationalism, but people, that is an important uh, point or teaching of, of um, uh, uh, dispensationalism. We need to understand. We need to understand or else we will be misled. We will be misled to believe that the Jews have a separate seven years left over. When they now have the same time that the Gentiles have to accept the Messiah. What have the Jews or what, what kind of chance did they, the Jews have, those Jews that have lived the past 2,000 years? What kind of chance did they have if there's only a time after the rapture for them to be saved? It doesn't make sense. It's unfair. It would not be fair. But it is fair because even those Jews, since the, 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 the death of Jesus, they had a chance to accept Messiah. They did. You understand? And in part does not mean that all Jews don't see. It just means that those that are so stubborn that they don't want to see are getting even more stubborn and they get more deceived and they get more blind. That's all. And that's the same, that same thing happens with the Gentiles. They're not exempt. They're not exempt from being blinded because they reject the Holy Spirit. We know that. Rejecting the Holy Spirit blinds us even more and the more we reject the Holy Spirit or God or the truth, the more it blinds us. We know that. doesn't matter whether I'm a Jew or a Gentile. It will happen. So people, yes, I just needed to make this video really about these false teachers and these false teachings. And why in the world, people, is dispensationalism believing what they're believing? Because one, like I said, one important part is the Zionism. I am not against the Jews in the opposite. I want them 
to accept Jesus. I want them to accept Jesus. I don't, I'm not a person that's trying to keep the Jews out of uh, God's uh, um, will. No, I don't want them. I want them to be part of the family of God. Remember, God has cut them off because they didn't bring any fruit. And he says, and Jesus said that, that every branch that does not give fruit will be cut off. And then he also says, and I think Paul says that, that these branches that were cut off can be propped back in again when they believe and they get propped in into the same vine. The same thing who is Jesus. Because Jesus was always there. You know, the same olive tree. But they were cut off. And they can be propped in. Every one of them. Since the past 2,000 years, every one of them had a chance to be propped back in. And they rejected him. And their teachers are blind teachers and they're misleading the flock. And that is a bad thing. And we should not, we should not support that kind of stuff. Because that's what's been doing these so-called Christians, you know, they have been saying, oh, someday the Jews will be saved. No, the Jews need to be saved right now. This minute, there is not an extra time. The Israel of God are the believers. And that's the bride and that's the church. Now, I'm not saying the church are just the Gentiles. No, the church are all believers. There is a church that was in the Old Testament, an assembly of believers. That's what it is. Church means assembly of believers. I think Ecclesia. Okay. They had Ecclesia in the Old Testament. It's not a New Testament word. But yeah, of course, if you listen to dispensationalism, that's what they think. Okay. Because that's why they call this period right now, the past 2000 years, the church age. Well, that's not what Jesus called it. Jesus called it the time of the Gentiles because there was a time of the Hebrews, 2,000 years. And because there was a time of the Hebrews, now there is a time of the Gentiles because God wants to tell us, wait a minute, I want my people to be all of humankind, all of humankind, Jews and Gentiles, all alike. Why did Paul only name the Jews? It's very simple because the rest of Israel, the 10 tribes, they're mixed under the Gentiles. They will come in as Gentiles. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter whether you're Gentile or Jew. What matters is, are you going to follow Jesus? And we're going to have only one flock. And that is what I have said. Well, that's what God says in Ephesians. And you know what? I don't know if you um, have, um, you know, seen that video that I was talking about. But um, let me read it again. It says right here, starting with 14. And I have to read it. You know what, people, because you need to know this is so important. For he himself is our peace who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of two. So the two strands that are going to come together, the rope with two strands, thus making peace and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. We are the Gentiles, we were far away 
and the Jews are the people that are far and that are near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequent, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Okay, we are his household. Build on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself, the chief corner stone. And in him, the whole building, a building, the temple is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. And people... That is called the temple of God. That is going to be called the new Jerusalem. When we are up there, God is building us a framework where we are going to be put in and we are the temple of God. And someday we will be coming down with him in the clouds. That's what Zechariah saw. Zechariah 14, 5 saw that. So go there and see that. It says his people are coming with him. The people of God are coming with him. And this is what I'm going to close with right now. Okay? The start. It is important that we understand that. That we don't follow these false teachings. That we understand Okay? We understand what the Bible says. We need to study it. We need to read it. We need to let the Holy Spirit always guide us and show us the truth. But these teachers are going to lead us astray. They're going to lead us astray. And we need to walk away from them. Walk away. I understand that people need fellowship. Paul says, uh, that we should not um, stop the fellowship with other Christians. But when we're going and follow the wrong teachers, we're going to be led astray. And, and I know it's hard. I know it's extremely hard when you're used to a community and you really think that that community gave you the right things. And then all of a sudden you're realizing, oh, wait a minute. These people taught me the wrong, the wrong theology. And then what? Then what are we going to do? Well, I'll tell you right now. I have been really on my own for a long time. Uh, I have a friend, a Christian friend that I do, well, a so-called Christian friend that I do see uh, once in a while. And... But really, I'm on my own. And I have really fellowship with my, um, you know, uh, my uh, internet friends. I do. Um, not as much with my English-speaking friends, but with my German friends, I communicate quite a lot. And they encourage me. And I think it's pretty nice to have that fellowship. But I know a lot of people, you know, they depend on the fellowship of a local church. And that's okay. It's okay. But we then have to be very careful and even be extra careful what we believe. Okay? And we have to be critical. We have to be critical. We have to go home on Sundays or whenever you... Uh, you know, meet um, in your fellowship of believers and read it yourself. Do the study all week long yourself so you know the truth. And maybe you can also go to your pastor or your teacher and say, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. But then a, a lot of the pastors don't even teach in times anyways. That's kind of sad too. But anyways, I'm coming to an end. People, 
like I always said, let the Holy Spirit guide you. And hey, send me some comments. I'm always very, very happy to hear from you. Um, like I said, I have not as many English comments as I have German comments. And so I definitely want to hear from you. Also, again, I think I said it in my last video, if you are new, no, maybe I didn't say it, but if you're new, please let me know. Let me know that you are a new person that found my video. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely happy when I hear that there's new people uh, finding my videos because I'm not quite sure if I even uh, reach anybody, anybody new on YouTube. I may be totally shadow banned at this point from, um, uh, from YouTube. So it would be nice if you wrote to me and say, hey, I'm new, I just found you. So, but I also like all the other comments, okay? Um, let the Holy Spirit guide you and I will talk to you soon.